It is I, Joey Only Care Be Weather Dude. Welcome to another episode of Bad News. Okay, so Western Canada getting two big storms this week. Uh, first one's going to start in the prairies midweek, and it's going to bring incredible rainfall totals to some places. It will have a little bit of an effect on southern BC. However, our big story in British Columbia comes this weekend when a very, very powerful storm comes in, bringing uh, rain from all across the Pacific right to our doorstep. There's been a new series of earthquakes in BC that happened on Sunday the 15th, as well as I think fire season's over. Okay, uh, that's all. This is bad news. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything can happen. Get on. Wow. I'll watch the video later. Yeah, the people are buying the water. They try them up in this. This forecast brought to you by CanadianTraining.ca that's launching on October 1st. It's meant to bring training for you, your business, and your team. That includes mental well-being and public-facing roles. PR superpower, working with neurodiversity, becoming the broadcaster, using video and audio to reach your audience, messaging, speaking, and media, and more. Join the newsletter list now for exclusive insider previews and an early, extra early bird pricing. Before we get too deep into it, small chance of non-severe thunderstorms down in uh, the Cranbrook area, the Kootenays, this afternoon. Maybe 5 to 10 millimeters per hour of rainfall in that core. Then we skip on over to the prairies where it looks like the strongest chance for severe weather is existing in western Canada today. Uh, down in that B region, that's Winnipeg. Uh, kind of stops at uh, Bannon, Manitoba there, but uh, would include some of the uh, communities in between. 90 kilometers per hour wind gusts. Four! Uh, hail! That's big hail. Four millimeter, uh, four centimeter hail. Uh, 50 to 100 millimeter of rain per hour in some of that rain there. So look out there, Manitoba. And you could also see some of that a uh, little less severe ish in southern Saskatchewan and a little bit through Manitoba as well. Brandon, Dauphin, Regina, Swift Current, places like that may see that. A little bit of action off the BC coast yesterday. We had two little earthquakes there. One not so little, 4.7. I mean, that's not so little, but the other one, that's a depth of 10 kilometers, uh, kind of the given depth. The uh, other one, 6.5, maybe even 6.6. They says 272 kilometers west northwest of Port McNeil, but obviously that's straight due south of Haida Gwaii. Okay, here's what I'm going to say something outrageous. Fire season's over. Okay, it's over. Now, that doesn't mean that things won't burn still once in a while. Okay, you know, we could have a fire call that happens a grass fire in October, November, but clearly that's not during the fire season, right? There's a, Things can burn outside of fire season. Yes, that doesn't mean fires are completely over and done, but the season is over. Uh, a lot of the red shirts have gone back to school. A lot of uh, contract crews have stood down. A lot of the fires in Western Canada now are showing less and less activity. The further we get away from that uh, heat that we had a couple weeks ago, the more calm. Not much is actually burning out there. Um, Saskatchewan, there's still the holdout province, but even it's taking a beating this week. It's going to be getting a lot of rain. So uh, things are things are on the outs for fire season this year. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And you have a look at uh, basically, you know, there is still that northeast corner, which is also the northwest of uh, Alberta, where things are pretty dry. It's still pretty dry up there in northwest territory. So, yeah, there's some problem areas that are still left. Um, mostly, though, you look at the central interior, it's been taking a lot of rain. Temperatures are cooler, more or less sunlight coming down now in general. Rain has come through. Through, through the weekend we did have uh here in wells even this weekend a fair bit of rain it's only eight degrees still so far at nine in the morning here a uh, fair bit of rain this weekend we did have 14.48 millimeters come down on saturday another six millimeters or so on friday so uh up over 20 millimeters this weekend here in wells that certainly probably was soaked uh the last remaining fire that we had burning out here which is out towards the caribou river that was showing some activity last week and the red shirts were out there but in terms of western canada you know hey things still a little bit dry in ontario a little bit warm there at times but uh that's they yeah, will eventually they'll get their turn for this uh crappy weather too right so right now things are warmer in the east and cooling off in the west is the overall story in this trend and we got this repeat going on this strong upper level low that's now sinking down on the west coast and so here's what we're watching right we're watching how that upper level low uh kind of takes off and it digs in into alberta there at some point here going to make itself a pretty strong storm. I mean, forecasters have been struggling with this one. Uh, the date's been changing here and there, and uh, the exact amount of rain and who gets what. Uh, you know, that, those things keep changing, right? So we don't have an exact forecast as per usual when it comes to these sort of larger events. But, uh, you know, we have a, a pretty good picture of what's happening, right? What's going to happen? Well, all eyes are on that upper level low and how it uh, jumps up into Alberta. Does it become the Alberta Clipper? And does it become as strong as some models are suggesting it will be? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very, very fascinated by uh, some of the imagery we've been seeing so far to this one. 
just checking out temperatures so far to start the week off and it looks like you know this afternoon you know saskatchewan maybe some of the warmer places uh northern ontario looking a little bit warm bc looking a little bit on the cooler side press play on tape okay tape play on tape so we just did see there's uh, some of those stronger thunderstorms we didn't look at Monday so much that were happening on Manitoba on Mon uh, Monday. But uh, Tuesday, that uh, continues on for Alberta. We got some rain coming into northern BC, most likely on Tuesday as well. Now we start to see that low really start to organize itself and pick up on Tuesday. Start to find its forming, its footing. Because of that, the backside of its slow, uh, the slow should provide a little bit of thunderstorms into southern BC. Now, uh, southern Alberta coming into the nightfall into Saskatchewan as well. So, looking like some overnight thunderstorms, some strong storms, packing a bit of a punch. Definitely pulling cool air down from the north and warm air up from the south, making the mid latitude cyclone, and that's what that would be called, right? So, looking at multiple days of strong thunderstorms, strong winds on the backside, we're really looking at where do these winds come in. So far, Alberta not getting them, but here's some strong, heavy precipitation numbers coming in, right? So Montana getting drenched, getting soaked. Alberta getting drenched, getting soaked. BC really avoiding it, and for the most part, having a pretty nice week. We get uh, some of that influence on the backside of it. Yeah, it's going to also bring some temperatures down a little bit for us as it does so, but, uh, you know, we're getting kind of lucky on this one uh, in general. Alberta, Saskatchewan in the Thursday morning. Now you're going to be hitting it pretty hard. That should be throwing some thunderstorms up to even Churchill, Manitoba. So this is a large system. It's going to be going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, maybe a little less windy than some of the models are projecting. So yeah, uh, a couple of days ago, strong thunderstorms Thursday into Manitoba. Uh, some of the wind projections keep changing right so we're going to keep looking at this this week and trying to get a picture of exactly how this big bad boy is going to play out and that's when it leads into the weekend for bc seeing uh, ourselves a little bit of rain maybe coming uh yukon northwest territories seeing some of your some snow icons up there northern bc seeing some snow icons up there this week so we're looking forward to that pattern change as we come into the final day of summer on friday the 20th of september uh meteorological summer already ended on september 1st sure we considered that differently so we're kind of watching to see where this next low pressure system forming up there will be like as it uh, is most likely going to be targeting into haida Gwaii and this has kind of the look to me of atmospheric river-ish. So I'm keeping my eye on this to see uh, what does this mean for BC Interior this weekend? What does it mean for BC Interior going forward? Could see some snow up in the mountains this weekend. So, you know, we're not going to spend a lot of time fo uh, forecasting a week out. But, you know, we're going to have a... We're not the ones getting hammered this week by the big storm that's going to be slamming the prairie so much we're looking at the weekend being a big story for bc with uh, some heavy rainfall heavy precip uh snow possible in the mountains looks like vancouver island could be getting a big soaking but again these images are going to change a fair bit between now and the weekend so we're not going to panic too much yet but this is what we're looking at for bc this is what's on our long term uh our our next big story for bc and, of course, that will become the next big story for Alberta and Saskatchewan as well as it moves over the prairies and uh, when it gets its turn to, to break inland. So we're getting an active storm track. We're starting to see more and more of the look of fall weather, right? And Mark Ingalls this morning, you know, I'll just mark from our show, he's already been posting about uh, uh, what La Nina might be looking like as it's expected to start developing the next number of weeks. Uh, the water's coming into place. We just need it to sort of finalize and become the El, uh, La Nina proper. Did I say El Nina before La Nina? I, I get confused. I'm just talking, talking, talking. That's what I do. Uh, yeah, so looking forward to the weekend. Big weather change, big pattern change. Fall is going to slam into BC uh, severely and seriously. I'm quite sure that. Uh, have a look at some of these rainfall totals this week. So just on Wednesday alone, some of the precipitation numbers coming into southern Alberta, looking like maybe 91, 92, 118 mils. So we're really watching this to see how this plays out. Um, this could be localized flooding, flash flooding, and things like that as well, right? Some of those stronger, also Great Falls. My, it's gonna be, you're gonna be greatly falling on Great Falls. It certainly seems that way, right? Add another 24 hours to the models. Not a whole lot of change, right? So the big day seems to be Wednesday for precipitation. You can sort of see here the track of that storm moving out. Uh, BC mostly having a precipitation-free week. 
So big time numbers for the prairies. Southern, Southern Alberta looking like you're going to get really good. And uh, here's some of the good news for some of those uh, fires up there. They're definitely going to be taking some precipitation, maybe not some of these crazy totals that, uh, you know, we're not exactly sure of yet. We're not exactly sure of, but uh, we're getting closer and closer to the day. So it's starting to look more and more like heavy rain event for Southern Alberta and into the Manitoba. It's not to the weekend where we start to see uh, our big numbers show up in BC where, again, we could be looking over 100 mils on the coast, right? We could be looking at some pretty substantial rainfalls. 150 mils by the time we're done Saturday, Sunday. It's possible 130 in places. So, uh, you know, we're looking at that for the coast, maybe a little, uh, a little drier for the central interior for sure. That's uh, to be expected. And the, the mountains being the place that uh, tends to love getting so much of this rain when it comes. But um, now, as we head to Monday next week, we're looking at far ways out. So we're we're not going to guess too much. But it looks like a lot of rain coming to Western Canada and weather cool down, right? Like the temperature in all. As this low starts to develop on Wednesday, it's pulling very warm and very humid air up towards Winnipeg, up to Bar uh, Barron's River, right? But on the backside down here, it's pulling cooler air down from the north, right? So uh, we're still kind of lucky, right? This week, you know, BC, we we're, you know, mostly having a seasonal week, you know, and maybe even a little bit nicer for some of you. Hey, uh, 20s, we'll take it, right? Ontario gonna get warmer 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 as that comes in we got some extreme heat down there like Oklahoma still sitting at 36 is so the summer's not over for them even though it's legally over but yeah we're looking at how this low is gonna be pulling a lot of this is gonna be help what helps feed it so much right the warm air is gonna be pulling all the way up and then now uh, cool air in the backside that makes big time mid-latitude cyclone angry you know and we come into the weekend I'm gonna see those temperatures continue to dive down and then we're gonna come in for that next round of storm by the time Saturday comes. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're going to be looking more and more back at the summer weather saying, wow, remember that? That was awesome. As we keep diving lower and lower and lower and lower heading into October. So big time storm for you in the prairies this weekend. Big time storm for BC this weekend. So that is more or less the story that we got for you so far. I'm going to be getting back into my regular forecasting. So uh, I'm sorry if I took a bit of time off there. Um, I find this time of year difficult, you know, more generally because you go through like days and days and days. I mean, you look at the forecast for BC this week. It's really sort of nondescript. It's like, well, you know, you could call it variable. You could call it uh, seasonal, I guess, you know. It's like not a whole lot happening until the weekend comes, right? So it's like... You get these sort of like periods at this time of year where, uh, you know, when you're looking at summer forecasting, you look at winter forecasting, things are very definite when they're happening, right? It's like, well, here comes this and it's going to do that. We know because that's what this season does, right? And when you're in those uh, shoulder seasons of the fall and spring where you get a little bit of this weather, a little bit of that weather, and it's like it's, you know, kind of fickle, but it doesn't, it, you know, we just don't have that. Um, Either way, it's not cold enough for a warm to come slam in and make things uh, insane. It's not it's not hot enough for a cold to come in and make things insane. So it's like you know you, you spend like you spend a lot of time at this time of year just kind of looking at the weather, going like, well, it's not doing much. It's just kind of happening, you know. So uh, this week being different, we do have some big stories on it, but you know, hey, hold your hats, uh, hang on to your horses, maybe check your local forecast as we come into uh, Wednesday for you in the prairies, especially, and uh, come into the weekend for BC. Uh, doing, more, doing more regular forecasting, so we're going to be trying to uh, touch base here every day and see what we can see and see what we can uh, talk about. So uh, the fire season's over, I'm going to say that, all right? Doesn't mean things are not going to burn a little bit still, but fire season's over. Hey, um, please support me. Uh, I could really use help. I really need it. Yeah, I do. Um, join the Patreon, Interior Weather Watchers, patreon.com slash interior weather watchers, or become a member here on uh, YouTube channel, right? Uh, every little bit of donation helps. It costs money to make gear. It costs money to own all these apps. It costs money to, to, to exist, you know? So, you know, Help me out. That'd be really, 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 or just send a donation of some kind or gifts or things like that. Really appreciate it. You're going to need another sponsor in about a month's time. So uh, ask yourself would uh, a sponsorship, you know, some advertising for your business be good for you. Okay, that's the show. Joey, only care every weather, dude. Talk to you later. Bye now.